Hi, everyone. Going to talk about redesigning Web3 UX with Wallet Connect. You guys must be thinking, what's wrong with Web3 UX? So first of all, my name is Pedro Gomez. If you have any questions or you follow up with me in Twitter, Telegram, and GitHub, that's my username, Pedro UID. It's also my ENS if you want to send some ether. <laughs> What's wrong with MetaMask? So MetaMask is a Chrome extension, as we all know. And it's the only way we have today to interact with probably 90% of the dApps. And it lives on your browser. And if you change browsers, you don't have a way to communicate to another browser what is your wallet. So you kind of spend most of your crypto assets, like Ether and tokens, collectibles, just spread around different wallets. And you end up having to copy and paste from every device. So even if you have a mobile wallet, you end up copying your seed phrase. And even like wallets like Jax have cross-platform integration, but you just copy your seed phrase. And actually enables you to be vulnerable to someone copying your seed phrase, which is like the most valuable thing. So I think what we should be thinking is we should abstract the user from having the seed phrase unless they're only backing it up and just completely not knowing where they have the private key. And I think it should just be able to download an app, have it as a mobile wallet, and just interact with any device with one wallet. So I was working on Balance Manager, and we provided like a way to view and manage and exchange tokens. And we interacted with MetaMask, Ledger, and Trezor. But we still wanted to have the mobile wallet experience. And there was not a single way unless you had like an in-view browser, which was very constrained if you imagine having all of this real estate that is so nice to have on a desktop in a small mobile view. And we just wanted to use, for example, an exchange and like write the relay and have a mobile wallet where you carry with yourself and have the same private key everywhere. So, I found out the user friction between Web 2 and Web 3 is that when you have a Web 2 application, you have a login to a server that allows you to access to a database. And basically, this authentication became the wallet, and the database is the blockchain. And the only thing I'm trying to recreate with Wallet Connect is that MetaMask kind of has this part solved. The communication between the client and the wallet, it's pretty much solved once you have a Chrome extension. But uh, that also ties you to one Chrome extension. If you want to use a different computer or you want to use the same application on your phone, you kind of have to have different wallets. So it would be ideal if you could not depend on this system and actually have one wallet that you feel comfortable to call it your own. So what is Wallet Connect? Wallet Connect is an open source standard to connect desktop dApps to mobile wallets. This is, was the first prototype. And the only thing I'm trying to recreate here is how can I get the account from my mobile wallet to the web page and then sign the transaction securely on your phone? So the way it goes is like you create a session by displaying a QR code. And this QR code enables you to have the session token, the bridge server, and then a key that will be able to encrypt the data that goes during this session between the two devices. This will then create a bridge on the bridge a session that's used to relay messages. And you can actually share a lot of data that it's only visible for the that web app and the mobile wallet. So you've now co connected to Mo Wallet Connect. It displayed the QR code, and your mobile wallet scans it, and you're logged in. So you basically have the whole, let's say, it, an exchange, and you can just view your orders and see what tokens you have and just interact with the DAP. And now you want to sign a transaction. So what happens now? Now you have to have a transaction being signed to the mobile wallet, which is where the private keys live. And then you'll be notified by having the web app having a transaction request or a message for you to sign on the mobile wallet, which triggers a push notification, which is very normal user interface for any Web 2.0 app. So what happens is that you have a transaction sending to the bridge. And the push server will then trigger a notification that will request the transaction details, which with the session key that you had from the previous QR code, you'll be able to decrypt the contents of that transaction request. Then you're able to review it on your phone and say you either approve it or reject it. The web app will receive the transaction received or a status that you rejected the transaction, and you can just move on. And this is a very similar concept to what you have with right now with Web3, where you have a script that's injected, and you can just call send transaction. And then it, a pop-up shows for the transaction to be approved. The same thing happens with the mobile wallet. 
So within this infrastructure, we have four key elements, the web app, the mobile wallet, the bridge server, and the push server. The push server is actually super simple, because the only objective it has is tell you that you have a transaction. The transaction is never available on the push server, and the bridge doesn't have the keys to trigger push notifications unless the mobile wallet specifically whitelists the bridge to do so. So there's two kind of developer domains that I listed here, which would make sense for every dApp to have their own bridge server and every wallet developer to have their push notification, which they probably already use a system like Firebase Cloud Messaging, which they will be able to just have a serverless function to actually do this. So the QR code is the key aspect here, where it shares the secret between the web app and the mobile wallet. And the bridge server is only relaying this information. and doesn't actually access any of the contents. And if for some reason the bridge gets attacked and destroys the session, you just have to reset the, the session by scanning the QR code again. But the session should be lived for at least 24 hours, which enables you to not have to worry about that too much. So the result is very simple. You have, for example, this example where you have an exchange and you want to connect just like you would with MetaMask. You scan the QR code, and then you can just interact normally. And then sometimes you get a notification, and you get some details, and you can finally confirm securely on your phone that you want to make that transaction or sign that message. So what's next? So we want to expand Wallet Connect to not just be mobile to desktop. We want it to be like a full standard to connecting to all wallets. This would include like providing best and best US practices for handling MetaMask, injected web tree scripts and mobile views, or even hardware wallets like Ledger and Trezor. And providing like this library that does all for all connections, and it's a very thin layer into the apps and wallets, so they don't have to worry about each other. And this becomes like the Wallet Connect standard, where it provides one unified API to interact with dApps and wallets. So you can have mobile wallets, browser wallets, hardware wallets, all interacting directly with Wallet Connect. And for the dApp developers, this is simply one API, just like you have Web3.js. And this could actually be used as a Web3 provider that would make much more uh, simplistic use case where you can focus on your dApp utility. We're also thinking of standardizing the way we do transaction requests, moving away from the raw transactions. And it's something that we're really exploring how we can actually improve the information that the wallets have. Because currently, MetaMask doesn't display you much of the information that it's included in the transaction. Now that we have signed type data for messages, but we still don't have a way to actually know what this transaction's intent is when you're approving. So you're kind of approving, trusting that the, the app provided you the right transaction. And it, like I said, no waste of developer efforts, because at the end of the day, we want to provide utility and not spending time interacting every new wallet that comes around. So if you would like to contribute, there's a discourse channel that it has most of these uh, discussions going on, the Telegram, GitHub. Everything is open source. You can see the libraries for the bridge, the push, the web app, and the wallet. And the documentation is walletconnect3.docs.io. And you can scan the QR code for the website, which includes most of these links.